So back in July of 2019, this past summer, I bought from a friend this, it's a 1988 200 series Western golf cart. These were originally made in Desert Hot Springs, California, not too far away from where I live right now. But um, I wanted to talk to you about my uh, lithium battery conversion that I did. And um, I got the cart. The original owner wanted to sell it. They, she had replaced the batteries and she didn't charge them for two years. So the batteries weren't that great. So I didn't get it for a whole lot of money. And I found out within a few months that I either needed to go with regular batteries or after looking, looks like a lot of people were doing uh, lithium packs. And so I went ahead and replaced the six six volt batteries with a 10 cell. This cart was originally 36 volts, a 10 cell lithium battery pack which ranges from about 36 volts up to I think it's about 41 or 42 and these are actually uh, Nissan Leaf batteries used Nissan Leaf batteries uh, uh, generation 2 I think they were from a 2015 Nissan Leaf anyway um, you're going to be confused a little bit because I used the original wiring um, that was in here. But you can see this big black wire, that's actually the positive side. And the red ones over here are actually on the negative side of the battery pack. Um, so I put this in in December of 2019. So like I said, few months in after I uh, discovered that my batteries just were not going to hold charge. The other thing I did too is I put in a a 12 volt DC converter. This is actually I think it, it uh, it's either 48 or 36 down to 12 or it might even be 60 up to 60 volts down to 12. And I originally went with something a little bit cheaper but I had some issues with it and it actually burnt up. So um, we're in April and I've had a devil of a time um, keeping this uh, over here. This this is part of the accessories right here. Hold on a second here. I'm gonna pull this up here. But these are, this is part of the accessories, the original accessory, um, this line and I think it's this line right here, originally went to two of the six volt batteries. And they each have a, a, a fuse holder on them with a 30 amp fuse in them. Um, why I'm not real sure, but I kept uh, blowing this fuse all the time whenever I would run my accessories through my um, voltage converter. So I think what I, I've come to figure out with that over time are a few things. Number one, I thought maybe it had something to do with uh, maybe I needed a bigger fuse. So I went with something a little bit bigger. Didn't make a difference. Um, I thought maybe if I put in a switch to shut the converter off, which I did, I put one up here on the dash. <clears throat> so that cuts off the converter so you can't run any of the 12 volt accessories at all. That that might be the trick. That didn't do it either. 
I thought that maybe when I was going over bumps that the battery pack was hitting something in here, other wires or something, shorting out against the side. So I put some plastic plexi plates on this side and I also put them, I don't know if you can see it over here, I'm reaching over, over on this side as well. But that didn't make a difference either. And so finally, after talking with my pops, I determined that maybe there was an issue with this negative ground that was going back to here. And I think this is some kind of a, oh, what do you call it? A, um, shoot. Circuit breaker of some sort. And so I finally got around, and this wasn't very long ago, just a few weeks ago, I finally got around to uh, testing the ground, the continuity from here back over to the negative side of the battery, and there wasn't any there. So I'm guessing that circuit breaker was bad. So I just decided to run a ground from here down to a different part on the frame, right there. And I know some of you are going to say, well, that should be black, but I only had red, so. And then I also decided at the same time to get another fuse holder, run two in parallel, so it would increase the amperage. And ever since I've done that, knock on wood, I have not blown a fuse. So I'm hoping that solves the problem. The other thing that I did was I put in <coughs> I put in these um, these are actually treated plywood I think they're three eighths of an inch sections in all of the sections where the batteries were originally so I had mounting places so I could add things in if I need to at some point in time but it actually runs pretty well um, it's still on the old uh, I think you call it a a static accelerator type setup. That's what you have right in here. Um, I might convert that at some point in time. I don't have any type of battery management system on it, but I periodically check to make sure that the, the voltage is all in the same balance. Probably like every couple weeks and so far so good. And um, it goes a lot faster clocked it at about 17 miles per hour and before it would go about 10 or 11 so and uh, the drivetrain is still the same everything else is still the same and uh, now that I'm not running into any issues it's actually quite enjoyable so I hope that helps out um, I would recommend doing this to anybody if you have a little bit of know-how you don't need to have a lot and just be patient with it and eventually um, you can get it to work too but again I think the key to keeping that fuse from popping was making sure that this ground here was good back to the battery so I hope that may alleviate anybody else that is thinking of doing this headache wise oh by the way this right here the battery pack was a little bit too high so I went ahead and I grabbed a Home Depot uh, uh, yardstick that I had and just threw it in there and that added just enough height to give it clearance so that's it for now uh, if you have any questions feel free thanks